Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely morning. Today I'd like to go over a post that front page Reddit from one of my very quickly becoming favorite subreddits, r slash piracy. And this one, it says, do we now need cracks for DRM camera batteries? And it reads an error message on this camera. It says the following with a red exclamation point. This battery is unable to provide data to the camera and cannot be used. For safety, choose a battery designated for use in this camera. When I scroll down, the first comment that I see is the most upvoted one, which I believe is one that will resonate with my audience and most certainly resonated with me. What brand is that so I can make sure to not accidentally buy that? And it is a Nikon camera. So this Nikon camera is telling the user, I see that you've installed a battery of your choice. No, 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 no. You got to buy a battery of our choice, which is most likely going to be made by us at an extreme markup. And the reason this may aggravate the user, for those of you who don't follow digital camera stuff like I do, is the OEM is going to mark up their accessories to an insane extent. One example, the camera I'm using right now. This is a Sony A5100. This camera used to go for about $494 retail approximately. I got it for $250 on eBay used because the flash was broken on it, and I'm never going to use the flash because I'm not using it for taking pictures. I wanted to get a power adapter for it so I could always have it in use without having to worry about charging it for the use of of this YouTube channel, and the power adapter from Sony is $140. This thing over here that puts out something like 8.4 volts at maybe an amp max is $140. That costs almost double what a MacBook charger costs. Like, that's insane. There is no reason for that. And there are many people like me that will say, listen, I love Sony cameras. They're amazing. Thank you for making such a great camera. I'm going to buy my accessories elsewhere because you've lost your damn mind. And that is what a lot of people do with their accessories. This is a camera that will actually work with an aftermarket accessory, and the first party manufacturer is still charging $140 for a power adapter. Imagine what they would do if they could restrict you to only use their stuff with their camera. That would be a mess. And that is why a lot of people are mad at things like this, because they don't want to live in a future where their $500 camera requires a $400 battery that's made by the manufacturer, which is the only one that works. Now, there are a couple of things to discuss here because there is actually a technical safety reason to do something like this. But what I really like to discuss more here than just the technical safety reason is what they also could have done in addition to this. And I want to try and quash any of the fear-mongering arguments you're going to hear uh, regarding what's going on here. So what's the safety argument? Safety argument is that this is a lithium ion battery, and when lithium ion batteries get too hot, they can go on fire or explode. And a camera is something that you're very often going to be holding to your face right up to your eyeball. I don't want something that I'm holding up to my eyeball to be at risk of exploding or going on fire for obvious reasons. I'm ugly enough without having third degree burns. In all seriousness, what makes sense in these cases is to have something called a thermistor in the battery. A thermistor is a resistor whose resistance changes based on the temperature. So for instance, and I'm just tossing numbers out of my ass here. If you have 10 kilo ohms on the resistor, that could mean that the battery thinks that it's 20 Celsius. If you have 100 kilo ohms in the resistor, that could mean the battery thinks it's 100 Celsius. So the camera can say, hmm, okay, it's 10 kilo ohms, probably room temperature, that's good. Oh, it's 100 kilo ohms, that battery is probably on fire, turn the camera off. That makes sense as a safety feature. The battery is going to heat up more the more that you use the camera, especially if you're using video recording features and things of that nature that are going to ask for a lot of energy and also make the camera's internal processor warmer, thereby making the chassis and the battery warmer. So this allows the camera to turn itself off before the battery gets the thermal runaway. Thermal runaway is the temperature at which you cannot stop the battery temperature from going up, which means it'll explode. So let's say that a lithium ion battery hits thermal runaway again. Well, let's say 100 Celsius, right? You may do something where you say, okay, the battery temperature is quickly going up. Once the battery hits 60 Celsius, we turn the camera off so that even if the battery still keeps getting warmer for a minute after we turn the camera off, it's not going to go anywhere near the thermal runaway temperature of 100 Celsius. Let's say maybe it'll peak at 75 or 80 and then come back down, something like that. That's the idea that we're getting at here. And it makes sense to have this type of feature inside the camera. Now, the problem with a thermistor is that this is a system that is very easy for somebody who is a bad actor to break. If you just simply put a resistor there, you can cheat. So if you put a resistor there, now the knockoff battery may communicate to the camera 10 kilo ohms all the time regardless of what the temperature is, because it's not a thermistor whose resistance varies based on the temperature, it's just a resistor. So the aftermarket battery manufacturer now gets to save, I don't know, 20 cents per piece that they create in exchange for creating something that tricks the camera and is in some way a safety risk because you're bypassing that safety feature. There are a lot of good aftermarket battery manufacturers that are not looking to save 20 cents at the expense of your life that will put a thermistor in there, and many of them do. 
some don't. And those that don't, oh, that, that, that's kind of bad. Now, does this mean that this is the way that this should be dealt with in a very expensive device? In my opinion, no. What could we do that would be a compromise that would allow Nikon to say, we're protecting the safety of our customers and allow the customer to have the freedom to use whatever they want in their device? Well, that's a great question. Two things that can be done. The first is that you could have a thermistor in the actual battery socket of the camera. So any of you remember building computers back in 2000 and 2001 before it was common for people to run programs like core temp to see the temperature of their CPU die? Remember back in the day, really long ago building computers, you would see the CPU socket temperature. Around 2005 and 2006, these applications called core temp became popular. It allowed me to see the temperature of my CPU die. So if my CPU socket was 40 Celsius, Typically, the CPU die, depending on how well the IHS was applied to the CPU, would be anywhere from, let's say, 5 to 15 Celsius higher. So if the CPU socket was 40 Celsius, the CPU die would be, let's say, 45 or 55 Celsius. The same thing can be said for here. Even if you're not able to get a good read on the temperature of the battery, the battery is going into a socket. So what you could do is you could have a thermistor in the socket of the battery, and you could measure that temperature as well. So if somebody puts in a battery that they can't confirm is one of their authorized batteries, what they could say is the following. Typically, we have a cutoff with this camera where if the battery goes above 65 Celsius, we turn off the camera. Because you are using a knockoff or third-party battery that we can't verify, we cannot trust the temperature reading we're getting from that battery. So what we're going to do is we are not going to use the battery temperature anymore. We are going to use the battery socket temperature and that temperature threshold is set way lower. Instead of setting that at 65 Celsius for the battery, we may set the battery socket threshold temperature at like 40 Celsius. And we could say any time that battery socket goes above 40 Celsius, we are turning off the camera. If you want a more accurate temperature reading before shutdown, what you can do is you can buy a battery from one of these lists of authorized batteries. Instead of doing something like that, what Nikon decided to do is say, oh, you're not using a battery that's on our list which in my opinion is a, not a great way to go about it. Now, if you're a Nikon, this probably makes sense because to add another temperature sensor to a camera like this, not only would you be spending more money, but you would be spending more money to lose money. Again, you would be, you would be adding to the cost of the camera so that the customer can choose to give money to people who are not you. They would be spending money to lose money. So I can understand why they would not make that decision. But on the flip side, they're technically causing people like me and my audience to say what this gentleman said here, which is what brand is that so I can make sure to not accidentally buy that. Because uh, that's the way I'm looking at it. The way I'm looking at it is you could have done something that allows me to use a battery of my choice while simultaneously maintaining the safety of the product. And you didn't choose to do that. You chose to just say, I'm not allowed to use a battery of my choice. You're locking me into using your batteries, in which case... I'm never going to buy your product again. That's the way I look at this. And one of the things that you're going to see in the comments of this video is, well, this is to prevent all of the people from having their face blown off by these cameras that are exploding everywhere, because apparently we have an epidemic of exploding cameras in our country. That's what you'd think if you read the unpopular posts in this particular Reddit thread. And one of the things that you'll hear very often when it comes to people who are looking to take away your freedom, your sovereignty, your ability to do what you want with what you own, is they tend to use one particular argument over and over again. And what we're going to do here is we're going to turn the tables and use that argument against them. For those of you who are curious what argument I'm talking about, let's just go over some lobbyist testimony that I've recorded on this channel over the years. Uh, respectfully, we are testifying in opposition to Senate Bill 5799 today. Uh, we believe this legislation is in search of a problem that does not exist. Something that's resonated with me is something that you heard early on here is this is legislation in search of a problem. Now, the people that tend to take away your freedom Every time we talk about having more freedom, every time we talk about having some ability to say that we own what we've purchased, they say the same thing. Right to repair all this stuff. This is in search of a problem that does not exist with the fake smile. Oh, it's so sociopathic. But anyway, how many times have you seen a camera explode in someone's face because they used a third-party battery? Be honest. How many times have you read about that happening in your local news? How many times have you seen somebody just taking pictures of the nighttime sky that had a third degree burn on the side of their face the next day because their camera exploded as a result of buying an aftermarket battery rather than the original? This is not a thing. This does not happen in numbers high enough to justify taking away the freedom of millions of new customers. And I think we understand exactly why different alternative safety methods 
have not been considered here. Again, if this were honestly about temperature, I get, I'm no engineer, I'm just saying, measure the socket temperature, lower the threshold temperature by about 20 Celsius just to be safe. This is something that I think can be done that would really, really be, be a great balance between the customer having safety. If you cannot verify that they're using an OEM battery, you could inform them of why this is the case. You could even let them have a little temperature sensor on the camera. That's another thing. You could have a temperature sensor on the camera where you could say, here's how to tell if your camera is using a BS battery or a good aftermarket battery. We're going to put the temperature of the battery on the screen. If this number never changes, you know you bought a piece of crap. If this number changes, you bought a good one. There's so many different ways that they could have dealt with this. But the way that they seemingly chose to deal with this is to produce something like this, which is as anti-freedom as it gets. And again, really reinforces the top post here. What brand is that? So I can make sure to not accidentally buy that. People are going to say that there is zero implication for safety when you are using an aftermarket part, even if it doesn't have a thermistor. And I think that's going a little far. I think we do need to give the devil its due. There are genuine reasons to care about this. I would like that my battery honestly report its temperature to whatever device that I am using. But there are also very simple workarounds for this that would allow the customer to have the freedom to use what they want. And there's a reason that they're not putting it in there. It's because they want a future, in my opinion, where accessories are priced like this and you don't have a choice to go somewhere else and buy an accessory that's priced a little bit more uh, reasonably for lack of a better way to put it again i'm not paying 99 or 140 for that i'm going to buy something like this because i bought this camera used for 250 bucks and it's just not that serious okay. if i'm powering a ten thousand dollar camera i'm not going to take the risk i'll buy the 140 dollar adapter this is a used piece of crap from eBay with a broken flash. This will do it for me. Let's just be honest about what's going on here. You've been using aftermarket batteries in your camera for decades now. Decades. And your face probably hasn't blown off. Because this is not an issue that is front page news. More people in the United States are harmed every day, probably by a mass shooting, than they are by a Nikon camera blowing up in their face. This is not an issue that is deserving of this level of restriction in DRM, in my opinion, and... I'm going to take a wild guess knowing my audience, your opinion as well. And what makes me so aggravated here is that they've taken something that technically has a safety implication and kind of pulled the wool over your eyes and done this misdirection thing where they're not being dishonest. There is technically a safety implication here. But the way they've pulled the wool over the eyes of non-technical people to get them to go along with this is they've pretended that there's no other way to solve this problem. When in reality, there are many other ways to potentially solve this problem that do not include taking all of your freedom away to purchase a battery that you want to put inside of your camera. And they didn't do that. They chose to go the fear-mongering way. They chose to go full restriction and full DRM when that was not the only way to solve this problem. Very, very, very fringe problem. Again, I'm going to use the words of the opposition lobbyists that they've been using on me for the past eight years. This is a solution in search of a problem. I don't see cameras blowing up and exploding around me when I see tourists snapping pictures on a hot summer day. And I live in Texas. If the cameras are going to be exploding anywhere, it's 109 degrees summer that you have here. This is something that I find to be, yeah, kind of crappy. And I would not buy a Nikon camera until I see them reverse on this practice. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do you think that I don't care for the safety of the children? Do you think that I am encouraging people's faces to explode by being pro-freedom in this regard? And by asking that they consider alternative ways to manufacture their devices that value the customer freedom while simultaneously not restricting them? Or do you think this is just one giant money grab so that they can be the only one selling batteries for their cameras and thus having more of a recurring revenue stream that you're just not going to get if aftermarket parts are available? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today. And as